Welcome to our continuation of SU Grad 22 Success Week. My name is Chris Velarde. I'm the Director of Digital Engagement and Communications in the Office of Alumni Engagement. Uh, I am also, as you can see by my name over there, over there, uh, a class of 1995 grad, a degree in broadcast journalism before they stuck digital in the middle of it from the Newhouse School and spent some time in TV news before joining the Office of Alumni Engagement. So I'm happy to be here. I'm glad that you're with us today as well. And we have some outstanding young alumni who you are going to hear from today. Before we begin the program though, just wanna let you know that there is closed captioning available and there are instructions on that and a few other things in the chat section here. Um, also how to change your name if you don't mind doing that. It's easy to do if you can put your name first and last and your grad year. That would be fantastic. Um, again, we've got a great lineup of outstanding young alumni that you're going to hear from kind of in a TED Talk type of fashion, giving you the idea of what it means to promote yourself. And that can be a difficult thing to embrace, but look, we all have a brand. It's something that comes along with, uh, with who we are and what we are. And it's important as we go through life, having to develop that brand and helping others understand who we are. Key, of course, I think is authenticity. And I think you'll hear more about that from our speakers today. We're gonna to start with Natanya Lewis. She is a commercial realtor, a franchise owner, a certified mindset mastery and professional development coach. And if that's not enough, she's also published a children's book. Her defining destiny is to assist young women and men pursue their purpose through discovering their passion. And she's not going to stop breaking barriers until she is able to instill into every youth, teen, and young adult that they are important, necessary, and needed. So I will stop talking and let Natanya take it from there. All right. Hello, everyone. First, congratulations to the class of 2022. You guys did it through the pandemic, through COVID. So I applaud you guys. I'm so excited for your future. And I'll just get into it because I have like 10 minutes. So I came up with a quote and the quote just says, be courageous, be mindful, be kind, be different. And most importantly, whatever you do, do it with passion, grace, and excellence. You can just go to the next slide, please. So really quickly, who am I? Like um, my, I guess, friend said, I forgot his name, um, but I am the founder and CEO of I Am, which is my brand. I am a franchise owner. I am also a 30 under 30 recipient. I'm a graduate from Syracuse University with a BA in, in economics, a children's book author, commercial realtor, and something that's a little bit more fun. I'm a dog mom. So I have Midnight and Chopper in the corner right there. You can go to the next slide, please. So first, I just want to talk about how to brand personally. What is branding? So basically, branding by definition is a name given to a product, person, or service such that it takes on an identity by itself. So what I came up with was a little acronym, and it's BU. So first, B, believe in you. Believe in your talents, your ideas, what you bring to the table, and who you are. E, next is educate. Education is everything. Educate yourself on the field of study that you decide to specialize in. You want to be the expert that people go to. Why is for you. You are your greatest resource. Explore different things, network by yourself, get comfortable with being uncomfortable. And I can't say that enough. Oh, one step at a time. You guys all have matchless potential. You graduated from the best university in the world. Um, I am a little biased. So you wanna use that to your advantage. And you understand that you don't have to be the greatest to start, but you do have to start to be great. And that's a quote that I love and that's by Zig Ziglar. Oh, the next slide, please. Thank you. So next, one of the most important things is your social media presence. So what has worked for me is having three different types of social medias. So the first is, or the primary one that I use is my website or my landing page. So when you graduate and you're putting yourself out there, people wanna know who you are, what you do, what you bring to the table. So you want to have a website or just a place where people can locate you, find you easily and see 
see how they can use you in any way, whether that's the, um, the degree that you have or any volunteer work that you've done. You just want to have a place, have a primary place where people can find that information. Second, I would say have a LinkedIn. It's so important to be able to network and have connections with people from different um, socioeconomic backgrounds, from people who are a lot older than you. LinkedIn has, for me, has been a great resource and a great tool, um, and I, don't, I really do value it. And then third, I would say have an active social media platform. For example, for me, I use Instagram. So I use Instagram because it shows that I'm still a person. I still love to go out. I love to brunch. Um, I have my dogs. So it still just has a human um, component to it, which is very important. And then you can go to the next slide, please. And then next, I want to talk about how to thrive in the workplace. So I wanna focus on three key essentials. So the first is to be intentional about your goals. So if you, whatever you decide to do after you graduate, whether that's getting a job in corporate or trying to start your own business, be mindful of what position you're taking, why you're taking it, and how that position that you're currently working in, how it will help you in your overall end goal. Two, I would say is to be resourceful. Um, your resources is everything. So connect with everyone. You don't know who other people know. And you also want to use those people in such a way that they could possibly help you with your end goal, whatever that is. And then three, which I had to learn the hard way is patience. You are not going to just graduate and just like get this six figure career or position. So be patient with, your, with yourself. You have something that a lot of people don't have, which is time. You have the opportunity to explore different things. And there's a quote that says, how do you eat an elephant? And the answer is one bite at a time. Small daily steps and habits create a long-term um, success as well as connections. So you want to trust the process. And then we can go to the next one, please. So for me, I'll tie it all together. So my brand or my personal brand is I affirm my myself, which the acronym for that is I.A.M. And I am is not just my brand or my business, but it's who I am. And like I said, it stands for I affirm myself. My tagline, you are important, you are necessary, and you are needed. So through I am, I am a coach. I'm a children's book author, commercial realtor, franchise owner. And my um, purpose is to impact, engage, and influence every generation before and after me. Currently, I'm working towards that goal through my books, through action, joining my local chamber of commerce, making connections, and most importantly, believing in myself and my abilities. My brand type is a founder. There are different types of branding. So you want to research and figure out what kind of brand you want to um, show yourself, like what you want to portray to other people. And then we can go to the final slide. Thank you. And then, so next are my three takeaways. So first, I would say my biggest takeaway so far is joining my local chamber of commerce. It has opened so many doors and so many connections that I would not have been able to make by myself, which has been really important to me. Two, do not be afraid to step out of your comfort zone. Every person of success that you meet all had a starting point. Embrace yours. And three, do not be afraid to brand, rebrand, and start over until you find your niche. Everyone has a starting point. Um, don't be afraid to step out of your comfort zone. And then just a few reflection questions that I've just taken into consideration that I think might help you guys is one, what is your one takeaway from this, I guess, little chat? And then two, you really want to figure out what is your why, how it's going to help the generation that you are you guys are in now and how it's going to help the future generation and you really just need to find your passion in order to excel in whatever you guys do and with that said i am finished i do believe that i finished a few minutes early i think so i'm not sure if we're doing like a q a before or after
I was going to jump in and say, if you have a question uh, and you'd like to, to pop it into the chat, please feel free to do that. I will ask a question if you don't mind. And, and it kind of jumps off your last point, which is don't be afraid to brand, rebrand, start over. This is an evolution, right? I mean, I, I get it. I'm a guy who was a TV guy for a long time. And, and obviously I'm not anymore. I, I do this just to flex those TV muscles once in a while. But <laughs> But that idea of evolution, we're all constantly evolving. So how that's a scary thing. How do you recommend somebody embrace that type of evolution? Well, first, I want to say thank you, Chris, because I forgot your name before. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay. I was no like, problem. I forgot his name. I'm so sorry. I didn't do a good job branding myself off the top. So <laughs> sorry. Like, no, you're fine. Um, and I would just say it really taps back into um, what I said before. Get um, You just have to get comfortable being uncomfortable. Just start with... I guess maybe small changes, try something different, do something new. And then from there, set a goal, set goals. I love goals. So set one goal, one thing I'm gonna do different this week. One thing I'm gonna do different by the end of the month. So short-term, long-term goals, baby steps, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? <laughs> and uh, something that I also wanna mention is lean on the people who can help you out. And I noticed that uh, very clever, you had QR codes all over your, your slides. And if you, uh, you hit those QR codes and you can reach out to Natanya and any of, of the folks that you're gonna hear from today, one of the things that I think is, uh, is part of our Orange family is we're always willing to, to help out and answer questions and support other members of the, of the family, so. Yeah. Yes, and I'll just quickly just say, I forgot to mention that, but yes, I did have QR codes. So if you guys do follow me on any of like the LinkedIn channels and you need help being endorsed or you would like a review or just a little bio or anything, I'm more than happy to do that for you just to help you get the ball rolling. <laughs> All right, Natanya, thank you for, uh, for being a part of this today. We appreciate it. Thank you. Our next presenter is Ethan Tayo, class of 17. He is a health entrepreneur, an indigenous human rights advocate, and a social media planner. So some of the tags that he got over the past few years that he's been involved in the Syracuse community. But you know, again, it's always evolving, right? As an undergrad at the School of Information Studies, he developed a strong interest sparked by his time abroad in London in 2015 in food. I'm also interested in food, so I look forward to hearing about this. He finds fascination and joy through showing others the potential for food as a mechanism for empowerment, engaging in creative ways to educate people uh, about home culinary, food culture, and traditional food ways that pull back the obscure layers of our food system, taking a deeper dive into food. Also interested in focusing on community-based solutions to providing accessible and sustainable fresh foods while connecting people kind of as an urban gardener. It's the focus of his grad degrees pursuing through Falk right now. He's also a first time cookbook author. Feta get about it, right? Did I, did I pronounce that right? Yes. Kind of a play yeah. on the cheese and forget <laughs> about it. All right, well, Ethan Tayo, it's your turn, take it away. Thank you, thank you. Uh, and thanks for having me, it's great. Um, like I said, my name is Ethan Tayo. I've been at SU for what feels like an eternity now, but it's really in the past seven, eight years um, I've really have become someone who was lost, someone who was confused, and I've really been able to find myself. And social media had a huge part of that, of really understanding both what I bring to the table, what I can offer to others, and how I can define myself in the world that's more connected than ever before. Um, like I said, I am actually currently finished up my food studies degree, um, working with indigenous foodways. And this was a project that has been years in the making of me figuring out every step of the way how I found that passion for food, how I understand my identity through that, and what I use as a creative vessel to share with others. Um, and food has always been that mechanism for that. And currently what I'm doing is I'm creating a space using digital means of connecting people, connecting universities, finding ways of reaching out to people who don't quite understand social media and how we can change their voice and bring it to them. Um, and from this, I've realized there's this personal desire in me that wants to do the same for myself. I keep applying what I learn and what I experience to help others do that. And in return, they give me the affirmation that I know what I'm doing and that I have my brand and I understand it. Um, so starting with me, I'm here to talk to you today about what I am today, how I got there and why social media should be an integral part of not only your professional career, but your personal one as well. Um, but also adding to the thing before I begin, I wanna congratulate everyone. Um, 
on their accomplishments and the journeys, especially over the past few years. We've all faced difficulties. We've all faced realignments with ourselves and realignments with our vision and really trying to figure out what is that purpose. We've learned how fragile the world can be. We've learned how to support ourselves, how to reach out and hopefully how to communicate in a way that can affirm each other. Um, most impactful, we've learned the importance of connecting with others and the need for this digital media to really bridge that gap when physical reliances aren't there. Um, and I believe wholeheartedly that everyone has a purpose, um, both <laughs> in the way that they approach things and what they can give to others. Um, they all got a story. We all have a narrative. We have a way of communicating that's unique to us and the way that we perceive the world. And I think that social media gives us that vessel to do that in a way that is easier than writing a book, easier than producing a movie, but it's something that builds onto each other. And as you look back, you begin to realize the person that you've changed and who you've become along the ways. And it's, it's a great experience. Um, geez. <laughs> I lost where I was going with this, but um, oops, sorry. But now that the world is open and we're starting on this new chapter, both physically and literally now the world's open, um, it's time for us to kind of begin and to rethink. And I think both as someone who had graduated, but also is coming back to school and about to graduate again, I find myself repeating the step of where am I? What do I do? And how do I prove myself? And doubts about my resume, doubts about my personal life, doubts about my ability to really achieve that can be washed aside by looking back on the work that I've done, by taking the opportunity to really show the progress, to share these stories, to find dialogue in these commonalities. Even if my vessel is food, I can relate with people in different ways. Um, and when you get into that negative spot that I found myself multiple times in grad school, it's easy to fall back and forget about that. But as we continue, we got to continue to remember that we are more than a resume and we're more than what our LinkedIn profile means. We're people on the cusp of that. Behind every recruiter, there's a person who wants to know your story. And every business is a brand was built off of a mission and a story by an individual. We're all used to social media. And for many of us, it's a way of communicating and sharing ourselves. But it has so much more to offer than just a chat room and memes. <laughs> social media has fundamentally changed the way that we interact. It has given us a platform to share these interests, these talents, and to find new people who relate to us in a way that we haven't been before. Um, changing our daily lives and creating these connections that are global um, is something so unique and so powerful that we get to have today. Um, and I struggled with this problem of figuring out in this big world, where am I? Um, and that's when I turned, starting in my undergrad, as I said, my health, journey through health and wellness to social media, to Instagram specifically. I started to find new ways of sharing. I was passionate in health, I was passionate in food. I want to see how I can be creative. I want to apply myself to find new ways to support my mission, but also share with others. And so I began a platform on Instagram while I was abroad, not knowing anything about social media or knowing where I could go. I began just sharing my story, sharing my interests. And slowly I began to meet new people. And from these connections, I've been able to find more people to weed out other ideas, to reaffirm the value that I bring and to really build that confidence that's needed, both on a personal level, but as a professional, it started to unlock these gates that I could see where these opportunities lie, what I could do with something that was a hobby and turn that into a career and turn that into a lifestyle and build these bridges between the ways that I perceive myself and the ways that I want others to perceive me and also how I can give back to them. And so it really turns that passion into a hobby, into a lifestyle is kind of what I've been able to do with that. And from the social media work I've done with others, I've been able to look locally and really help support small creators. And I really truthfully do believe in small entrepreneurs and the ideas that we have are much bigger than ourselves. And social media has allowed us to really get those ideas out, to be able to find the people who can help support us along the way. And I think that that's the biggest thing that I've learned in the past two years was that when you're in such a questionable space and you don't quite know where you want to go to start a conversation, to reach out, to listen to others who want to connect with you. And at the same time, to just jump, <laughs> to want to just dive in and see what happens. Because um, every opportunity that I've been given has essentially come from social media, has come from my connections that I've had with others. And it's been a really cool reaffirming affirmation going into the project that I'm finishing right now and seeing the potential that it's had by bridging that gap between both the physical and digital world. 
I was able to crowdfund my first cookbook over social media. I was able to build friends and connections with people and companies and businesses across the country who were interested in the work that I did. And this too added to that idea of, okay, I have value to add intrinsic stuff. How can I continue to show this? How can I continue to build projects in the future I can look back on and affirm that I was able to build this bridge and this journey through each chapter of my life despite the fact that sometimes it ends, sometimes our social media stuff dies down, sometimes our interests change, and sometimes our focus realigns with what we want to become and how we develop. And I think taking that personal approach to how you approach social media, even professionally, is important because you can put up a facade, but you can't take away who you are underneath the covers. And I think the more that we try to share the vulnerable side of us, the side that we don't necessarily always talk about this side that we try to hide from recruiters or our resumes and try to spit them up if we really share who we are as humans I think that we can connect fundamentally both professionally and personally and I think that that's my takeaway with all my experience with social media finding ways to help others communicate their value and at the same time building relationships with brands businesses entrepreneurs communities institutions is really important um <laughs> and so how do you start doing this? And I think that's the biggest question is that it's overwhelming. And as many of us are going to say, it's different for everyone. It could be as simple as just sharing a post. It could be as simple as starting to show your hobby. If you have something that you do all the time, post about it, share it, see who else is into it. Not everyone's going to like what you do, but those who do will really connect with you. And that's where those flames start going from there. You can start a conversation. You can reach out to people, comment on other people, find people who you align with and see what they do and how they've gotten and learn about their journey too. Because maybe along the lines, they followed the same steps that you did. Or maybe they have the potential to give you the next steps. And that is also <laughs> a really magical thing. And if you have an idea for a project, like say a cookbook, or if you want to start a business, or if you want to build a product and just help the world <laughs> in a way, you have to start somewhere, you have to pitch it, you have to communicate with others, share it, see what the interest is and see what happens from it. If you go in with good intentions and with positivity, you're sure to get that back in return. And social media, though we know, and we can always comment on how negative it can be and how is there's issues with it, at the same time underneath, there's a lot of potential for this to do. Um, and I think that everyone should be able to find their voice through both their professional and personal means on social media and to use as a tool and not as a escape or as a break away from other stuff or as a way to vent. I think that there are creative ways to do so and there's ways to share that and to really have this divide where you can create your own space in the world of everything going on it is incredible. And so <laughs> As we step into this next leg, I'm, I'm here with you trying to figure out what the next steps are. Still growing, still evolving, still learning. But I know that I'm grounded in the fact of all the stuff that I've been able to do and be able to look back on and share with others along the way. But also to look back and let others see where I've gone and see what they could possibly do. And I think connections is the biggest thing. It's, it's meeting people who you would never meet before. It's working with universities and building the project that started as a seed and has now grown to a movement with several universities. The work that I've been able to achieve wasn't possible if it wasn't for me connecting with people online and using social media as a tool for discovery and as a vessel to kind of just be creative and have fun with it. And so I hope that everyone takes away both the professional attributes of it and how to really build up your social presence, but also that personal and to keep it humble into yourself and know that you're navigating your own path and social media is there to allow you to do that, to build connections with people who let you go along that way. And so thank you. I hope everyone the best and good luck. We'll all find our purpose somewhere. Ethan, thank you. Community building sounds like it's a big part of, uh, of your theme and, and finding that community both personally and professionally, and sometimes they're aligned and it, and it works out nicely. Thank you for uh, for, does. for your time. And, and if people want to find you and, and maybe reach out to you, where's where's the best way to, to do that? LinkedIn, probably search my name on LinkedIn would be a great place. We can start a conversation and see what's going on. Excellent. I love connecting with people. All right, Ethan, thanks very much. Thank you. Our next presenter is Melinda Guida. She's a strategic marketer, brand storyteller, part-time photographer, content creator. 
see, none of these people have just one label. I think you're finding that, right? Which is completely fine. That's the way we like it. She pitched and project managed integrated marketing sponsorships for network TV brands like Freeform, ABC Daytime and syndicated programming, AMC networks, which include AMC, BBCA, IFC, WeTV, Sundance. And it was her job to work with partners to make sure that the advertiser brand messaging was aligning with the network programming and tentpole, tentpole events, things like that. But we evolve. And in January, Melinda made a career pivot into tech and a new role at Twitter where she helps brands align with premium content from entertainment publishers on that platform. Her passion for entertainment storytelling and content creation bleeds into her off the clock time, which is the photography. And she's going to talk about all of that. She graduated in 2015 with a bachelor's in marketing management and entrepreneurship and emerging enterprises at Whitman and a minor in public communications at Newhouse. She's a first generation college student from the Bronx who navigated through a lot of firsts, but found her way through it all. And I'm sure it all is part of her brand. Melinda, thanks for being a part of this. Thank you so much, Chris. And I'm super excited to be here um, with you all. Thank you, Syracuse, for having me. Um, and congratulations to you all, the class of 2022. I am so, so proud of you. And I hope you guys are all proud of yourself for getting here. Um, so yeah, so thank you, Chris, for that introduction of myself. Uh, for my presentation, I actually want to talk a little bit deeper onto a specific topic called unpacking what makes you you. Um, something that I find so dear to my heart that I have um, really molded myself and, and understood a little bit better over the past couple of years and understood more about myself. And I want to share you share with you some secrets, if you will, on um, what I have discovered along the way. So you can go to the next slide, Grace. So who am I? So my name is Melinda Guida, formerly Melinda Rivera. I was recently married, um, so that's my new name now. But I go by Mel, so feel free to call me Mel. And so, you know, what is my personal brand statement? And this one is just, it's short and sweet. This is not my bio. As you know, Chris just said that, but this is just a personal brand statement that I want people to perceive me as. Um, I'm an energetic, altruistic, and passionate brand storyteller with a dash of sazon, a content creator, photographer, tech marketer, wife, mommy-to-be, and aspiring podcast host. Now, I just want to make sure you, you see that this is my current brand, personal brand statement. And, you know, I say current because we are constantly evolving. And, you know, Chris mentioned this earlier too, and I'm going to dive a little bit deeper on that later in my presentation. But, you know, I want to, I want you to notice a couple of things here in my brand statement. <clears throat> notice how I didn't mention my place of employment, you know, and why is that? Because it is simply that, you know, my place of employment does not define who I truly am. And, you know, I feel like one, one should try to refrain from leading with that. Um, you see, I was at a conference once and for the icebreaker, the question was for people to share who they are. And almost every single person in that room said their job title and their place of employment. You know, so for all of you, you may say, you know, I'm a recent college grad, soon to be employed at X company as a coordinator or analyst or whatever, whatever you are. But let's unpack that. And we can go to the next slide, Grace. <clears throat> who are you exactly? You know, what makes the parts of you uniquely you? And more importantly, how can you set yourself apart from everyone else? You see, when I explained my personal brand statement, I gave you some layers to the parts of me um, that are different. So I said a dash of sazon and you're like, ooh, she's Latina. Um, you know, and I'm a little playful. So I wanted to add that into it. Um, I, I tell you that I'm a brand storyteller. I tell you, tease my expertise, but I'm not specifically saying, hey, I'm a partner manager at Twitter. Um, you know, I tell you that I'm aspiring podcast host, give you some mystery to the fact of what are, what are my hopes and dreams and my aspirations um, so that you have something to work towards. And that combination of what I shared with you is what makes me unique. There's no one else in the world with the exact personal brand as me because there's only one me in this world, right? You know, and that's the same that I want for you all to figure out. Because, you know, I think we often think we know ourselves when we actually never really unpack the layers of ourselves like an onion and sometimes go through life without unlocking that inner potential. So in the next slide, I have a fun way to think about this that I want to share with you all. Um, and you're probably going to look at this slide and see once it gets there um, and see like, what the heck, what, why are we looking at a picture of giraffes? But I have this fun way to, to bear with me. Um, so when you look at a group of giraffes, right? They all appear the same, just a group of giraffes. But what's fascinating is that they all have different spot patterns that make them unique. 
literally not one giraffe has the same spot pattern as the other. They're all so different when you take the time to really study them, to look at them. And the way I look at it is, you know, every single spot on their body resembles something special to that singular giraffe. And if they live a life thinking, oh, they're the same as the next giraffe, they lose sight of their true purpose, that unique spot pattern that they were given. You know, similar to us as humans, if we thought, oh, well, someone else wants to do exactly what I want to do. Anytime we had a great idea, went for that dream job. We're doing ourselves a disservice to our unique selves that we were all blessed with and forgetting, forgetting that, you know, just like the draft, you know, you have a spot pattern that no one else has that could set yourself apart more than, you know. So ultimately what this means is, is that the jobs that you hold do not define who you are because there is so much more you have to offer that you need to be way more conscious of and not be afraid to share the world. And I want you to keep in mind of that because I know when you go into the workforce, it's hard not to feel like you, you know, the job that you got and that maybe you didn't really want is now a part of your identity. I felt it, but that is far from the truth. So now it's your turn, you know, in your mind right now, start thinking, who are you? What makes you, you, as I said earlier, we rarely ever sit in our thoughts and really, really unpack the layers, the mosaic, if you will of all the aspects of who we are. And so I hope that, you know, after this, I encourage you to reflect and write down all the things that make you, you, and you, you know, you'd be surprised that your mind, what your mind has you write down. You might even stop in your tracks and be like, and feel that feeling of imposter syndrome doom over you when you write something that feels unfamiliar, but something you've always wanted to be known for that you feel is like something that should be a part of your personal brand. For me, that was saying aspiring podcast host. I haven't got there yet, but I have the great idea and I can't wait to do it. But that's not probably not, that's probably what some other people don't view me as. But as you're writing them down, imposter syndrome is not welcomed. And you keep writing down all the things that you feel in your core is your purpose in life. So on this next slide, I have a personal brand framework that I want you to take away from this presentation. Um, You know, you can create a personal brand statement in many different ways. This is what has helped me personally. And I hope that it helps um, at least one one person in this room. Um, So the way that I look at it is like, put down adjectives. What do you feel define you? What are some adjectives that really, really express who you are? For me, it was energetic, altruistic. uh, And I'll get into altruistic a little bit later. Um, That is a fun story. Tease your expertise. Brand, I, I said, I'm a brand storyteller. I tease what my expertise is, but I didn't get into the weeds on like what my title is at my current state of employment. Your identity, I want it to be playful because I'm just a playful person and say a dash of sasson instead of just completely saying that I'm Latina. And then how you want to be perceived, some aspirations, give your reader some mystery and intrigue to learn more about you because, you know, the truth is your story is still being written. But why is, you know, building out this personal brand so important? Well, because there are so many people in this world who probably do want to do the similar, similar things as you probably want the same job, want to start a similar business, want to start the same blog. But if you don't have a clear picture and definition of who you are, then this journey will constantly feel defeating and you will keep yourself stuck in the comparison game. I was there and it sucks. But when I started to reflect who I am and who I want to be rather than who I think I need to be to appease other people, I became much happier and more confident in my abilities to shine. So with that, on this next slide, I leave you with three steps to unpack what makes you, you, and ultimately create that personal brand statement for yourself. And you could throw it on LinkedIn and throw it on your social platforms. Um, So first, you know, dig deep into who you are in a list format, write down, you know, all the things about you, your identity, your race, your passions, your relationship status, interests, personal experience, cultural experience, socioeconomic status, because all of that, those aspects of you really could like give you some perspective on why you are the way you are and what, why your dreams are the dreams that they are. Um, the next one is call a friend or a family member that you trust and have someone tell you from an outside perspective, what do they think of, uh, when they think of you? What qualities stand out to them about you? And I say this because I did this with a friend of mine and then 
when I, we were just talking, she was telling me that she sees me as an altruistic superstar. And I was like, what is this word? I've never heard of it. Um, and I looked it up and it basically means a selfless and empathetic person, um, who thinks of others before themselves. And I was like, that is so me. I am always thinking of everyone before me. And so I was like, I'm putting that in my brand statement because that really defines who I am as a worker and in my personal life and everything. So I, um, wanted to include that. So you will find some interesting tidbits when you speak to a friend or a family member that you trust, um, and learn about yourself. And then from those two focus in on how you want to be perceived, you know, and develop that personal brand statement. What is the story you want to tell about yourself? And that one line, one statement is not going to be, um, you know, everything about you, but it's how do you want to be perceived to the outside world, to the workforce, to um, other individuals. But lastly, in the last slide, I want you to remember, um, and it was also mentioned earlier in this um, whole presentation, uh, was that, you know, your personal brand statement and you will constantly evolve. So it's best to do these reflections every year. I like to journal every year and think about how I've changed as a person, what life experiences molded or shaped my personal brand that, you know, now I want to be perceived as. So do the same for you because you will grow. You will create new chapters in your life story. And it's up to you on how you want to portray and champion your own self in life and work and everything. So with that, I close out. Um, congrats, grads. Go out there, stay true to yourself. And I'm so excited to see you write your own story. Thank you so much. Wow. We've had, we've had talking about elephants and how you eat those. We've had giraffes with their, like this. We're getting all kinds of different lessons we didn't expect. It's a so, safari. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And if, if folks have questions for you and want to reach out to you, what's the best way to do that? I think we could start at LinkedIn, um, Melinda Guida, and then you could, you find me and then we could connect there. Go from there. Excellent. All right, Mel, thanks so much. Thank you. Our final presenter today is uh, originally from Syracuse and a 2014 undergrad alumna of Falk, earned a master's degree from the School of Education, a certificate of advanced studies in athletic advising and administration in 2018. Also a member of the women's lacrosse team when she was a student here. Trenna Hill is born to a father from the Onondaga Nation and a non-native mother. Trenna says she used to feel trapped by her biracial identity. And there's a lot that I'm going to let you talk about, Trenna, but something that you said in, in the bio that I had struck me as incredibly powerful. And that was quoting here, there is nothing empowering about being half a person or trying to force yourself into spaces that are committed to being too small. So I'm interested to hear more about that from you. Um, she obtained her ICF life coaching certification in 2020. And after seven years in higher ed and collegiate athletics, she transitioned to an entrepreneur role as the director of athlete development and recruiting for the Fire Lacrosse Club based in Los Angeles. More evolution, we're constantly evolving. You can follow her at thebiracialblog.com, look for her podcast, Full of Yourself, debuting this summer, and give her your attention now. Trena. Oh, I'm already muted. You guys did that for me. Okay. You're all set. <laughs> um, hi, everyone. Good morning. Scano Squiggy, New Scano. Um, my name is Trina Hill. I am tuning in to you all from the West Coast this morning. So I actually just finished my first cup of coffee. It was kind of nice being last here in, in the lineup uh, so I could wake up a little bit. Um, but yes, thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, everyone, for having me. Um, I, I love Syracuse. You know, I'm, I'm far from home now, but uh, definitely still an obnoxious uh, alumni here on the West Coast, letting everyone know to bleed orange. Um, and, and definitely comes up a lot, quite a bit in my job now as the director of recruiting. So um, I, I love self-branding. I, I love that this is the topic for today. Um, very on brand, very on, on brand with that kind of feeling that a lot of these brand new graduates, you know, are feeling it. It's definitely a, a scary time and an exciting time. And I always felt like the adults were kind of screaming at me to you know, oh, it's just the beginning. It's such a new thing. And I was overwhelmed with like, this is ending. <laughs> like, I, I feel overwhelmed with like, I, I don't want to embrace a new beginning. Like I'm, I'm sad <laughs> uh, to be leaving. So nonetheless, um, self-branding is something I could really talk about all day. Um, and so I was very happy and thankful to be invited to speak upon this and only a little bitter that we only get 10 minutes to do so. So um, after about, 
yes, about a decade or so in, in higher ed and in athletics, um, even as an adjunct professor out here on the West Coast, I have since pivoted to a role in full in full time coaching. Um, you know, despite my best efforts to kind of leave lacrosse behind, it it I was never quite able to to let it go. Um, and so I'm I'm not going to really pitch advice here. I, I'm I'm going to tell the story. Um, that's kind of the best way that I can promote self branding is is to tell the story. So. Um, I, let me look at my notes here. Um, yes, technically the role that I have is, is director of athlete development and recruiting, which really just means that I help athletes from here get recruited to play lacrosse in college. Um, I've helped other athletes. I've helped, I have helped male athletes and I've helped athletes from other sports, but typically my job is pretty much in the niche of women's lacrosse since that was my own sport. Um, it's, it's my favorite part of my job every day. It's what I do the most of every day is kind of championing the self-efficacy and facilitating this process of, of the narrative, right? You're pitching to these coaches, not with an autobiography and not with a resume. You're, you're pitching to them with the narrative of who you are as a student athlete and why, why this is going to be a good fit <laughs> and, and why they should, you know, why they should recruit you. Um, and, and on and off the field, right, both as a coach and as this, you know, in, in my role as this recruiting director, it's a, it's a lot of negotiation. It's, it's a lot of managing that negotiation. It's a lot of unpacking, you know, the anatomy of what goes into making an empowered decision. And, and you'll find the brand there, right? It, it's kind of a byproduct of those things and not necessarily something you always seek out intentionally to find. Um, a lot of it is stumbled upon, it's, it's happened upon by accident. Um, and, and I help girls and, and these athletes really embrace kind of the ebbs and flows of that success equation um, and, and be able to you know, expand themselves enough to reach both arms around the entire process, right? If, if, you're, if your dream is to just get recruited or in your case, maybe just get a job, right? You're kind of missing the point. And, and there's a lot of development there. There's a lot of things to unpack that will help you become confident and, and prepared when you actually get to the finish line, right? You don't want to get to the finish line empty-handed and be like, oh, uh, I actually don't know what I'm doing because this was the whole, this is the whole point, <laughs> right? So it's, it's a lot of my job that that's not the whole point. Um, and people, you know, they don't just want to get recruited. They don't just you know, want to get recruited in college. They want more of that togetherness feeling. They want, they want the magic and that community and that organic connection that really can only happen in teams. Um, you know, they want something to both contribute to and belong to, right? There's, there's that, that container um, where you feel validated and supported, supported enough to be vulnerable enough to, to seek and experience all of those ebbs and flows of, of success, right? And, um, and, and, and a dynamic that really does embrace that, a coaching staff that's going to embrace that and, and champion your success and champion your triumphs and your failures and kind of let you grow into yourself um, surrounded by, by teammates who, who also want the same things. Um, and that's, you know, that's important to find that, that reciprocity, right? And in your efforts um, to experience both the challenge and the triumph. And what I have found is that there will be many math, there will be many matches that, you know, probably have that criteria included, but not many fits. Um, and, and my job is to, is to help facilitate that process that a lot of places will be, might, might be for you, but there will be one place that really feels like home um, and, to, and to help people understand what that feeling is when they arrive to it. So I'd say on the field, then pivoting to my on the field, right? My company is three people. So we are kind of the do everything people of, of this entrepreneurial efforts. Um, but on the field, you know, my job is to provide them that experience that is probably the first time that they will feel that. And, and I, want, I want to provide, you know, a student athlete experience that they can just copy and paste for, you know, in their future college lacrosse team. Um, or, or whatever they find, you know, in their, in their future student athlete experience or just student experience. Um, I, I want to, you know, I'm, I'm very much known as the culture queen in, in my organization. And so I, you know, I'm, I'm constantly intentionally providing these opportunities 
in practice, in games, at tournaments, in championships, right? To access that feeling of confidence, to, to access that feeling of belonging and, and togetherness. And, and I'm intentionally giving them opportunities to, to access that thing. So um, that's kind of a little bit about what I do, but you know, behind all these great, you know, meaningful, purposeful work, right, is, a, is another story. So my own athletic career was heavily influenced by what my bio indicated, um, being both biracial and being an indigenous female. Um, I was definitely caught between the margins of the margins in this complicated and deeply layered vortex of being both half white and half indigenous, but also not having the one thing that you need in order to be considered really indigenous. Um, my mom is non-native and in, in, in Indian country is um, a matrilineal society. So if you, if you don't have, if your mom is not native then you don't have a clan, right? So it's, it's unlike kind of westernized culture and that it's patrilineal, we are matrilineal. So um, after being quite literally kicked out of, um, long haul ceremonies and just asked to leave spaces with, you know, the homogenous group. And it even happened a few times at Syracuse, unfortunately, but nonetheless, um, you know, being asked to leave, right, kind of does inform that there's nothing empowering about being half of a person. Um, and so, you know, after some traumatic experiences culturally and just some very intense identity crisis of, of being half and being biracial, I, connected to the only thing that I had left, which was my people's sport. Um, and, and that was lacrosse. And so only to, to find out that, that in, in the culture, women are forbidden to play lacrosse. So I kind of got double whammy there and I kind of self-selected the one thing that would make me even more othered. And, and I was just, I, I, I was not supported. I was not, my success was not championed. Um, you know, I, I may have been, supported playing lacrosse by a very select few, but was otherwise very, very unwelcomed that that was not, um, I, I became known for not, for not it, it wasn't a positive thing. I was well known, but not for necessarily something good it seemed. Um, and so, you know, th there was a lot to unpack there. It was difficult, it was painful, it was confusing, um, but alas, you know, I, I did it anyway. <laughs> Um, I, I had a great playing career. I was a very decorated athlete. Um, not many mentors, you know, not, not many people that, that were, that I could see myself really experiencing this success. Um, you know, I, I was one of one female from Onondaga Nation and also simultaneously caught in a weird place of even being able to claim that I was from there, um, that that was not an empowering time that was not an empowering chapter but um you know I kind of looked around and, and there were not a lot of people like me that were really championing the biracial experience I, I kind of looked around and saw a lot of other people that were trying to squeeze themselves into into one side or the other and, and that always felt phony to me and and Indian country or not um you know I I knew that I wanted to play our people's sport I knew that that's how I connected um to to my culture and to my ancestors and to my family. And so it, it meant a lot to me to still continue to play despite all of the heat that I took. <laughs> um, and so let's see, I, I, I kind of learned about self-branding, right? By accident, kind of through there, through that experience and, and unconsciously, um, you know, I woke up every day and having to champion my own story. And, you know, qu quite literally no one else was going to, I was actually, you know, working against the forces that, that were trying to tell me that I couldn't and shouldn't and, and, and wouldn't be successful. So, um, you know, defying an entire nation of people as a teenager <laughs> um, and, and, you know, who may or may not even claim you as, as one of their own was, was a tight rope to walk. Um, and, and I don't think I really unpack that until, you know, much later, but it is not ironic that I do this work every day. It, it is not ironic that I help people champion their own story by unsubscribing from these prerequisites that we think that we need in order to make it or that we insist upon needing in order to even just take a single step towards that thing. Um, 
And so I, I moved to Los Angeles in hopes to bring lacrosse to a new area. And it is also not ironic that this is not a hotbed of, of lacrosse, right? Like I'm, I'm kind of on the ground doing the work with a handful of my best friends um, to try to generate this new identity for, for this place that is otherwise not taken seriously in the lacrosse community that's, you know, top 10, all, all those things. Like they don't, they don't come from this area. And that's actually what I romanticized about my narrative um, because I was also one of those people I was not taken seriously. Um, I, I was not encouraged to play. I, you know, I, I found a lot of affinity with, with that story. Um, which I think helps me go to work every day and, and helps it become so meaningful. And that, you know, I get to meet so many people and, and help all these families and, and these athletes and these girls really access that confidence that they need to succeed at the next level. Um, so yeah, I, I moved to Los Angeles in 2016, about seven years ago, I think now. Um, and, and I, you know, really to just improve the competitive identity of this area and, and change that narrative of who gets taken seriously, right? That that who gets taken seriously part is, is very much at the core of my own narrative and very much at the core of what I do every day. It's, it's the thing I am constantly combating, dismantling, challenging, disrupting. Um, and it's all, all influenced by that intersection of being female, of being biracial, and, and always being reminded you know, of who I am not and, and what I don't have. And, and that really has helped me to change and challenge my own perceptions of this concept of valid validity and who are the gatekeepers of this membership that is keeping you from the success that you want and the success that you probably deserve and, and all of these things, right? And, and challenging who is success reserved for and who is allowed to succeed. Those are the, those are the questions that I am both asking and answering for my athletes um, every day. So I'm going to wrap, I'm going to wrap this up. Um, I, I remember where you are right now. I remember that feeling of being unsure. Um, again, you know, I, I felt really overwhelmed by identity crisis, really another identity crisis of no longer being a student athlete, um, of, of leaving behind such an impactful time of my life, right? Like, you know, playing lacrosse there was just the, the best, the best experience. Um, we went pretty far every year. We never won it though, but, <laughs> um, I, you know, I'm, I'm pulling, I'm pulling from that feeling and I'm pulling from that memory when I tell the graduates in the room that, you know, your degree is a piece of paper. You're right. It, it, it is a piece of paper, but your education right, is really what is going to serve you every day. It's gonna show up for you day after day. It's, it's ultimately what you're going to bring with you into your relationships, into the workplace, into your future teams and into whatever it is that you decide to do. And, and that's, you know, and Syracuse provides what, what I think is, is the best education, right? Yes, they hand out degrees like everybody else, but it, but it is the education, it is the experience that you're going to ultimately take, take with you. Um, so, I, I definitely consider myself now to be a narrative change strategist. That's a new uh, term that I'm trying on just this year in 2022. Uh, so props to all the people that said evolution <laughs> and, and rebranding yourself because now I'm like, oh, I'm a narrative change strategist. I, I like how that sounds. Um, and so, yeah, a large part of what I do is just being, being good at helping people reframe the story that they are telling to themselves every day of why they, of why they can or can't succeed, um, right? That, that's where we all live. That's, that's why we do anything is, is we're living in these stories that we tell, right? And we wanna make sure it's true. We wanna make sure it's aligned and we wanna make sure that, it, that it's a good one, right? That it, that it feels good. Um, and while I may apply that concept to the context of you know, lacrosse and, and sports and fitness industry um, and, and recruiting and higher ed, I will leave you with, with this. I, I will leave you with three things. Um, the first is that the dream team feeling, right? That, that best team you've ever been on, it is not found, it is built. And I can tell you that from direct, um, my, my own experience and, and my own experiences every day here trying to keep this thing alive 
um, in Los Angeles. It, it is not found, it is built. And it, that really helped me to stop seeking and chasing the answers that live outside of myself. The answers are, are right here. Um, that, that's a big one. The next one is that, that thing that you are insecure about, about your own story, um, the thing that you might wish that you could just cut out of your story, the thing you're feeling haunted by or just awkward about, right? That thing is going to win the game. It's going to save the day. And it's important that you embrace the narrative around that thing and, and to change maybe what, what it means. Um, I kind of talked about that with like being biracial, right? That, that was something that I really had to wrap both arms around instead of just trying to squeeze myself into one side or the other. Um, I used to feel very trapped by it. I used to feel very insecure about being half, right? That narrative that I was telling myself about being half of a person was not empowering. Um, so I had, to, I had to change it. And now it's my favorite thing about myself. And lastly, um, this is maybe, maybe the biggest thing, but it's not about what, it's not about getting what you want. It's about who you are going to be when you get what you want. And if you change the character, right, then you change the story and aligning yourself every day with that future self that has all these things, that has the job, that has, you know, the apartment in your favorite city, that has the this and that and the other thing. Who, who is that person? And, and getting to know that person um, is, is going to help those things come sooner, but they're also going to help make those things feel like they're truly yours once they come true. Um, and I think getting what you want is ultimately inev inevitable, but, but really trying to become that person, you know, what, what are their habits? What, what books are they reading? What, um, you know, how, how, what is their lifestyle like? What, what is that person who has all these things that you want um, is, is, more, is much more important than the actual thing itself. So that's all I got. You want know, for, for having me again? Um, oh yeah, I forgot I put this slide. Um, I'm not as active as I should be on LinkedIn, um, which is not great advice for me to have, but nonetheless, these, these are some spaces that you can find me on. Um, if you want to get in contact, you know, if you're ever in Los Angeles, please reach out. I, I, I love meeting other Syracuse students. Um, you know, definitely will make time for, an, for another Q alum. So thank you again for having me and congratulations everyone. And I will say one of the takeaways that I got out of that is personal brand is yours. It's not what others are trying to impose upon you. And that that's such an important part of, uh, of the story. So trying to thank you. Um, and, and also, you know, you mentioned that you never won, but maybe it'll be one of the players that you send to your old teammate, who's now the coach that yeah, will, will right. create that championship that uh, the, one, the one of them is there. there. One of them is there now. So she, she just finished her freshman year. So there we go. Hopefully she'll get it in, in the next four. <laughs> That'll be the one. Um, we'll try to thank you, Natanya and Ethan and Mel. Thank you. And, and thank you all for joining us as well, whether you're joining us now live on uh, Tuesday, the 21st, or you're watching this recording later on. Hope you got something out of this. And again, you heard from all of our alumni panelists that they are happy to have you reach out to them to answer questions, to, to talk about uh, your own personal journey, and, and maybe they can provide a little support, answer some questions, and, and help you along the way. Um, so we appreciate you being with us today. And we want to remind you that our programs continue tomorrow. We have Money Matters from Credit to Crypto. That is the virtual program tomorrow, Wednesday at noon. Uh, there are also programs happening in cities across the country. So make sure you check out um, our website to find those and stay in touch. Best of luck and go on.